Hi everyone, happy Friday. It's Miss Carly here for another First Chapter Friday. This, this week I have a book called When the Sky Falls by Phil Earl. This is a historical fiction novel and it takes place during World War II. So it is in the um, perspective of a kid named Joseph whose dad is sent off to war. So he is sent to a kind of gruff, unfriendly woman named Mrs. F and um, she is a caretaker of a, the city zoo. So Joseph, when he's sent to her, meets uh, a gorilla named Adonis. You can see him in the cover here. And like, Adonis is also a pretty aggressive gorilla, doesn't make many friends. But Joseph and the gorilla seem to have a connection. Um, so while all of this is going on, the, wor the world is just in one of the biggest wars. So there's a lot of tension in this book. So I'm going to read the first chapter, or at least I'm going to read part of the first chapter because it's rather long. Um, so here we go. The platform was a battlefield. 70 yards of carnage transplanted straight from the coasts of northern France. Smoke billowed. People clung to each other. There were cries of pain, howls of despair, as loved ones were ripped apart. There were silent tears, too. Quiet reassurances whispered into ears that this was temporary, that it changed nothing. I am still your mother, your parent. Against the tide of devastation walked a boy, tutting and huffing at the tears and carrying on. He looked just like any other, any of the other evacuees in the station. Regulation case, tag, and gas mask box. But instead of being shoehorned onto the train, he was marching away from one, having just arrived. He had no idea where he was heading nor any real sense of who he was to look for, but he knew he wanted no part of the drama going on around him. He scoured the crowd, cursing at the smoke that bit his eyes. It didn't take much to light the end of his fuse, and the long journey down had been more than enough to start him smoldering. He seethed under his breath, then over it, not caring who heard. He'd give it a minute, see if anyone presented themselves, and if they didn't, well, he'd just sneak onto a train and he'd and be pulled back north. He'd hide out in the guard's van among the musty sacks of letters from soldiers begging to come home. He knew how they felt. He wanted to go home too, despite everything. He certainly didn't want to be here. It had been two months since his father had marched to war. Long months, both of them. And every day had hardened him tightening the cogs in his gut, winding up his anger, his fury. He peered down again at the faces by the barrier, not knowing who he was looking for, nor how he'd react if someone had the audacity to smile or beckon him forward. He didn't know the woman he was meant to be meeting, nor did he want to. And now that she'd failed to present herself, he was not disappointed. I'll go home, he said to himself, didn't have to be his grandmother. He would not go anywhere he wasn't wanted. Not anymore. He'd find an empty place. There were plenty of them around. He'd live off scraps, whatever he could find. He would not let anyone stop him. No one would dare. But as the boy spun to return north, he felt a hand on the strap of his box. Not a gentle hand. It clutched at him like a barn owl would a mouse. Joseph Palmer? The boy recognized the tone. He'd heard it plenty of times before. Police, he was sure of it. Joseph, is that who you are? A face craned over his shoulder, an interview, too close to focus on. He couldn't see the chin strap of a policeman's helmet, just a shocking frizz of grain red hair that sprang in all directions. I'm here to collect you, lad. A woman, a hard face, lived in, in a deep, gravelly voice. The boy looked into her eyes and dared her to look back. She did, and seemed about as happy to be there as he was. 
Don't know what you're talking about, miss. I'm just leaving. Sending me to the country, they are, with the others. The woman gripped harder at the strap. With an accent like that? I don't think so, Joseph. The boy didn't like the way she was holding him, or how she was challenging him, even if it was true. He shrugged his shoulder, then swung it, all the time, eyeing her angrily. But her clasp didn't give a bit. Get your hands off me, will you? I don't know you. Get your hands off me or I'll make a scene. The woman didn't doubt it. She could feel the power in the boy, despite his meager frame. Much of her would have been too happy to walk away. She neither needed nor wanted this. But there was a promise, wasn't there? She might have made it a long while back, but it was still a promise. And she didn't have it in her not to keep it. Or at the very least, to try. Joseph, she sighed, I know it's you, so you can kick and scream and deny it as much as you want. I've grappled with bigger beasts than you, my lad, and I haven't lost yet. The woman turned on her heel, pulling Joseph with her, despite his spirited struggles. But within ten yards, she felt her progress thwarted. The boy had put the brakes on. She turned, ready to bite, but as she made to speak, she saw it wasn't Joseph who stopped him, but a suited man who'd taken hold of Joseph's, Joseph's other arm, leaving Joseph stretched and angry in the middle. Are you this boy's grandmother? It didn't look like he was about to congratulate her. Joseph felt her bristle at the suggestion. I'm not, no, but you are responsible for him. Joseph could tell she didn't particularly like that either, but the man had her there. The second she'd arrived at the station, she'd crossed that uncomfortable line, and she was now responsible for Joseph, whether either of them wanted it or not. I am. Joseph flinched at this before bucking between them like an unbroken stallion. Well, he's stolen from me. All right, well, I'm gonna leave that there so that um, if you guys wanna figure out what happens, figure out what he did, what uh, he's stolen, You'll, you can come into the library and check out this book, When the Sky Falls. Or if you want to give us a call, we could put it on hold for you. All right. So thank you guys for joining me and have a great Friday.